Well, we know what is going on in this uh, chapter. Uh, the Lord Jesus is in a situation, seeing 5,000 men, at least men. Uh, maybe the Lord start to think, maybe they should be hungry. So we're going to be reading about two, uh, two different parts of the Bible. We're going to be reading John 6, and if you can also fa- uh, look for Matthew 14:14. 14, 14. So we're going to be reading in the, in the Bible what is, what is the Lord going to tell us in this part. John 6, and the Lord, the Bible say, After this thing, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and the great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did in them that were deceived. And Jesus went up to the mountain, and there he sat, he sat with his disciple. And the Passover, a feast of Jews, was nigh. When Jesus, left, uh, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw the great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that this may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what is going will do. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one that everyone of them take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And if you have Matthew 14, 14, we can read two verses here, maybe three. And we can see the other view of other writer of Matthew and say, And Jesus went forth and saw the great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples come unto him and saying, This is a desert place and the time is now past, send the multitude away that they might go into village and buy themselves beetles. But Jesus said unto them, they need no depart, give ye them to eat. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this moment. Thank you so much for what, is, what you are doing in Argentina. Thank you, Lord, for uh, all the good news we can receive today, and we pray you, Lord, you can teach us something from this part of the Bible. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So, something really briefly I want to tell about, you know, normally when uh, I, uh, I hear this passage in John, is the only one who talk about, in the gospel, is the only one who talking about a lad. And every time we focus on how old was that lad, but in this moment, I want to share the three different peoples we can see around Jesus. It's three different peoples. The three have different answers, different ways to think. And we want to start with the one who read in the last part. Shows, uh, we can find in all the other gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, they say, Lord, it's late. You should tell to them they have to, you know, depart and go and they find the solution for themselves. They going have to go in and buy food. And the Lord say, they don't need to go. You can, you can give to them food. You can give to them bread. And we can see these people, always they, they have the solution really quickly. Say, well, you're sick. You should go into the doctor. <laughs> you need money. You should get a job. It's really easy. And it's not really uh, something we can say is wrong. But it's not what the Lord is asking us to do. The Lord is saying here, they don't need to go in a part. You should give to them what they need. So in one way, we can see these people, you know, saying, well, but, you know, if, if they can do it for themselves, what about if they do it? But the Lord is asking us something special here and saying, they don't need to go in a part. You should be giving to them food. But then the Lord knows about these three different groups. We have this group, 
who say, I think the majority of the disciples, I believe they came and say, it's time to go, no more miracles, it's close to the evening. So Jesus tell them, and they go in and buy food. If they don't have money, well, they will see later what is going on. And that is something, it's no really nice, even when you have Jesus right there and knowing what the Lord Jesus can do. We have the second group here, and we, we can put the name to them. We have Philip and Andrew. Philip is the one who say, ah, how much money we need? Mm, 150, 200, 400 pesos, it's not going to be enough. Mm. No, you need more, you need more money. Or even with Andrew, who even he introduced to the to Jesus, this lad, he said, he has just, you know, five bread and two fishes. What is this for so many? It's not enough. Always we want to find people like this, say, well, it's not enough. You know, we, we, we think about how much we need and how much we need to, you know, cover all, but what we have right now is not enough. We have people who say, well, other people have to, have to take care of them. And other, even if we have 200 worth penny, penny worth, sorry, um, this is not going to be enough. We short. But we have, and sadly, I would like to say other group, but it's no other group. We have a group of people saying it's not enough. Other people saying we don't have enough money. But just one lad who came and say, I know it's not enough. And even I hear Andrew, when, Andrew, when I show to, to him what I have, he say it's not enough, but well, he went and told to Jesus. What I can see here is faith, different kind of faith, or different kind of have the solution. We know here, and, and, and we know different problems and we have some problems where the solution is not the money. Maybe you have good quantity of money, but you have a problem. And even with that money, you're going to be enough to pay something good, but you will not find the solution. But I like what this lad say. Maybe he was 12, maybe he was 15 year old. I don't know. But say, I want to do my contribution for what the Lord want to do. Because I hear it. The Lord Jesus saying, we don't need to go in because I want to be close to Jesus. So I don't want to go. And I know also we have about 5,000 men around here, and maybe they're going to be hungry. But I want to do my contribution because my contribution in Jesus' hands is going to be the difference, going to be the big difference. I don't know how this lad show up, you know, between 5,000 people and be around. But I know he know what is going on because he was close to Jesus. And he believed in him. And he believed all the stories in that moment he heard about Jesus, you know, like um, the Samaritan woman, what happened in the wedding with the water turning in wine. Say, so maybe he's doing good stuff in other places. Maybe he can do it here too. So I want to put my five bread and my two fishes in the Lord's hands. And he will do the difference. I will trust in Jesus. I will be close to Jesus to hear what he wants to do. And I will do my part, my little part. I know it's not enough. I know. Even I hear the other people saying, even 200 penny worth is not enough. Even these five fishes... I mean, five bread and two fishes, you know, it's not enough. But I want to put it in the Lord's hand because something can happen because I believe in him. We know what happened that day. The Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and 5,000 men, plus, I will say, plus women and children, they receive the food. 
Today we start, I start saying I want to, I am here because I want to, uh, you know, tell what the Lord is doing. And the Lord continue doing stuff. The, the Lord is alive. We, we know when I preach the gospel to the children, I tell to them, well, uh, the majority of them believe in Mary, the Virgin Mary, and say, well, the Virgin Mary in one moment died, and I believe she is in heaven, but nothing more. And if you believe in other stuff like, I don't know, Buddhism or, you know, other leaders, big leaders, they are already dead, but Jesus died, and three days later, rose again. So, or Lord, or, or God, Jesus is alive. So, he's the one who you can do your contribution to Jesus, and he will take care of the rest. In some way, I want to say thank you for all what you're doing, but what represent for you five bread and two fishes? Well, maybe you should be thinking about it. To me, five bread and two fishes is my life. And I know for Rebecca too. And we decided long, several years ago to put it in the Lord's hand because he will do something amazing. And he's doing. We can see already fruit about what the Lord is doing. So I want to invite you to think about what is your five bread and two fishes. And I want to invite you to you put it in the Lord's hand because he will do something amazing. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for being with us in this morning, teaching us, helping us, let us see what is going on in different countries. We pray, Lord, you be taking care of us, helping us to, you know, trust in you, be close to you, to hear what is what you want to do, to help you, Lord, what we have. With the stuff we have, and let us see what you can do. We pray, Lord, and I pray especially for this church. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing place you think about even more than 40 years ago, and we can be here together talking about not just what you're doing here in Greencastle in Pennsylvania, but what you are doing in different countries. Thank you, Lord, for these people, and I pray for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, I remember about 10 years ago when I came here and Rebecca was helping me doing the translation. So the Lord is good. Praise the Lord.